it's unmuted. All right, you guys, Isaiah's here, so you're good. Hey, how y'all doing today? Hey, Isaiah, how's it going? Doing all right, good day. Welcome back, first of all. Uh, when did Thanks. you when did you arrive at the decision? I mean, was it after talking to some of the uh, your new defensive line coach, or did you know pretty much before that that you were planning on coming back? Uh, I think the decision came when uh, speaking with all the coaches. Uh, I spoke with Coach B plenty of times, but then I recently spoke with Coach Jamie C and uh, Coach Walter. So like being here uh, speaking with those coaches uh, made me get a feel of who they were and what their plans were for the team, and I, I was really interested. So I decided, uh, why not? And one um, little follow up, just uh, the way the season went this past year, did that want to give you some, uh, you know, a bad, that left a bad taste in your mouth? Do you wanted to come back and think that you guys have better days ahead for that for next season? Uh, I always think it's more room to get uh, better. I always try to get better each day. That's what I did throughout the season last year. That's what I did throughout the offseason, each practice. We all decided to get better once we decided to play that last game at Penn State. And I think it uh, showed uh, Coach B that it was a team that's willing to fight. Thanks, Isaiah. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Hey, Isaiah. Nice to talk with you. Um, Coach Bielema has mentioned the idea of possibly running a 3-4 defense. You're someone who theoretically would project pretty well as an outside linebacker standing up. How exciting is that idea for you to potentially be an edge rusher like that? Uh, it's, it's very exciting because I always wanted to showcase my speed more than anything. We all uh, seen how strong I was and how well I can rush the tackle. I wanted to be that main one coming off the edge and getting those uh, big highlight plays, setting the edge, big sacks, you know, just a playmaker on the edge. And then as you come back, I know a couple of the other guys on the defense have talked about just the importance of being leaders and getting these younger guys to develop and understand that it's a new culture. Can you kind of comment on that idea a little bit as well and the importance of leading these younger kids along into this new culture? I think um, being a veteran player, I became more uh, comfortable with playing the, uh, the game of football. I learned to slow the game down. It has came easy to me. So that way, if I need to teach uh, a young one of my uh, teammates, something I can break it down to him in the way he knows, in the way uh, any each of them learn, I can uh, break it down for him. That's the, uh, the talent I have. I feel like I can watch film and break it down to him just like a coach can. And me and my coach be talking the same language. So I feel like we be on page. And then one last follow up. A lot of these defensive assistants, like Coach Walters, um, like Coach Jamison, are both young and seem to have a lot of energy. How exciting is it for you to be able to play with someone that's a little bit younger that you might relate to a little bit better? Um, and be able to have like casual conversation with and kind of stuff like that. I think it's going to bring a more competitive edge to the team uh, for a defensive side. I think it's going to be more competition. So we're going to play faster and hit harder. Actually, I kind of like uh, how they be talking, how they be saying, like, we're going to come in right out the gate and smack somebody. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Isaiah. Good to see you. Welcome back. Um, Thank you. Yep. Just, just wondering kind of how you're viewing this time now, um, assuming spring ball happens, um, assuming camp happens, you know, um, with, with a possible switch to a new defense, are you kind of expecting competition for playing time coming back? Are you kind of looking at things in, a, in an open sense that way? Um, this is actually a good time for me because this is the first time I'm actually healthy during the spring. And I feel like the way I attack each day, I can get better on each thing and I can build on it. Uh, I think I can be one of the best guys I feel like I showed a glimpse of it last year and uh, plays I had is going to be a uh, feature this year. So I'll, I'm just ready to play, actually. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Isaiah, we spoke with uh, Coach Jamison yesterday, uh, new defensive line coach. Um, he said he really wanted to get a call out to uh, all the guys. Just wondering if, uh, if you've had a chance to talk with him already and what that conversation was like. Yeah, uh, these coaches seem to be real family oriented because he reached out several times saying like we got to get the guys together, you know, a little fellowship or talk to them at least so we can like see, you know, like how we all feeling about the uh, the coaches or whatever. And then he also ready to work. So I've been really excited about that. What were uh, maybe some conversations that you've had with uh, whether it be Coach Walters, Coach Bielema, or even um, looking at Jamal Woods uh, and his decision to come back, and were what were kind of those those factors like for you as well? 
I think uh, Jamal being one of my uh, only classmates we have with 17, uh, he kind of like one of the reasons I stayed because it's all about family. And uh, that's one of my brothers on the team I really look close to and look up to. And then I also have been talking with uh, the coaches and asking them how like I would play if I was to play in this defense. And I've been liking the things I've been hearing and I want to just be a stand up guy. Thank you. Thank you. Isaiah, uh, you mentioned a little bit Coach Walters and Coach Jameson. Can you talk a little bit more about uh, what impressions you got from talking with those guys and what sort of impact they had on your decision? Uh, the first coach I talked to was uh, Coach Walters. And the first time I met him, he went right into it. He was saying, like, it's about business. We're coming in. We're trying to put guys in the league. They really caught me out the gate. Like, I was ready. To, I'm ready for that next step. I've been here five years. I feel like I've been showing glimpses of everything, speed, power, and getting strength into the uh, tackles and playing the rush. Like, I feel like he has a good plan. He's saying, like, he got a defensive plan that made me get a lot of money. And then how about uh, Coach Jamison as well? What were those interactions like with him? Uh, I spoke with uh, Coach Jamison briefly. Uh, he's getting settled in right now. As more as I speak to him, we get more of a better connection to get these guys back so we can have that same connection on D-line and we come together as a whole. And then I know some of your fellow teammates, some of the fellow seniors kind of made their decisions a little earlier on before all the coaching staff was in place. And you kind of made the decision a little later here where almost all the coaches are in place. How, how important was that to your decision? Were, were you kind of intent on waiting until more coaches were in place before you announced something? Uh, like I said a couple years back, I didn't want to be that guy to leave when things got tough because I've been through a lot of coaches changes and that hasn't really changed anything for me. I always attack each day. I always play hard. I try to make everything show up on film. So with these new coaches, I'm just attacking everything as me move, taking the next step, me moving forward as being one of those guys. Thanks, Isaiah. Thank you. Isaiah, welcome back. How did Coach Walters, Coach Jamison, Coach Bielma, how did they say they envision you in the offense? Obviously, it's a plan to, to make some money at the next level, but what's that look like? Uh, me and Coach Jamison, when we talked briefly, we talked about how I can be comfortable whatever's comes for me, even that's uh, the two-point or the three-point. I was speaking with him. I was telling him last year I had good good edge rushes with the two-point stand. So uh, he said, whatever's comfortable for you. So I said, all right, I'm ready to get it. <laughs> Is that – Com or comforting to hear that you know it's not like they're coming in and saying this is what we need out of you but they're, they're willing to to maybe mold a little bit of what they want to do around you and some of the other guys who are here yeah and I, I think that's what's going to make me a good player because I always kept things that other coaches or uh, old coaches have said to me and I just stacked those on using them as tools to better my game so with coach James is coming in I think he's going to teach me a lot of things I need to know to get me to the next level and then can I ask about the hashtag you used on Twitter and, and the meaning behind that? Uh, yeah. uh, hashtag this for you, little sis. Uh, yeah, I do that for my sister because I try to, uh, I ain't even really had anybody ask me that for real. I always just did it to honor my little sister. Uh, she passed away when I was in the first grade. And uh, I always like played the game of football for her because I know like, I want her to come see me uh, play football one day. And I was just getting into the sports career. I bounced around a lot of sports like basketball in my younger days and rec leagues, stuff like that. But when I really got comfortable with football, I wouldn't really see it. But uh, that's that's why I do it. Thanks for sharing that, Isaiah. I appreciate it. Appreciate you for asking that. I ain't never had nobody ask me that for real. Isaiah, you're not blind, you know, obviously to social media. You see a hundreds, a hundreds of kids enter the transfer portal every off season. It never seemed like it appealed to you whatsoever, and that process was going to appeal to you whatsoever. I'm just curious as to why, and then what makes you wired a little bit differently that you, you know, you're you're kind of more wired to stay at a place like Illinois, no matter how if it's going good or going bad. Uh, I really, I really just focus, choose just focus on taking that next step. Each coach comes in with a different philosophy, different way techniques, and stuff like that. I just try to maximize my potential with those techniques each year. And if I know I can showcase each of these techniques on film, that's going to look more appealing to uh, NFL coaches. Do you, you know, look at those guys that entered? I mean, what was going through your head this offseason? Because it was like there's a possibility you could have entered the portal again this year, but it almost seems like there's a couple of guys, there's a lot of guys on this team that kind of seem like, for lack of a better term, that's kind of like quitting. Um, did, did that kind of 
enter your mind of like, I don't really want to be a part of that? Uh, that has never entered my mind. I don't think any of my teammates felt like they was ever quitting. We, as many hard and rough times we've been through here at the University of Illinois, I don't think anybody can say any of us quit because we battled through so much. As long as coaches change, and I feel like we're all ready to come back. And I think that's why a lot of them wanted to come back because they feel like with the new change, they can, you know, new things will happen, you know. So I'm just ready. I'm just excited to start this this year. I'm ready, I'm ready to play for it. Thanks, Isaiah. I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, Isaiah, welcome back, man. Um, just uh, following up on Joey's question, uh, what was your sister's name? Oh, Brianna. Okay. Can you spell that real quick just so I have it right? B-R-I-A-N-N-A. Okay. Thanks, man. Uh, and uh, would, could you share, you know, how did she die and how did that impact you as such a young, young kid? Uh, I just... That was that was my first sign of, of losing a family member at that early age. And it was like all of a sudden, because I was a little kid, I didn't really know what was going on at in the family career. I was little, you know, so you can be grown people talking, they talking. But uh just to, for that all of a sudden to happen, it really hurt me because uh I never really got a chance to hold her. So I just I just say like if I ever got that chance again, I'll hold her and tell her like that's what I do it for. So, I mean, how has that served as, as your motivation? And is this how you remember her is, is by, you know, trying to motivate, use it as motivation? I kind of use it as kind of why, like, why you remember someone. Because, like, I want someone to remember me, like, I had a motivation to drive to get somewhere. And I finally got there and I never let anything get in my way. And I just focused on one thing at a time, use everything as a tool. So I just want to be a kind of a role model to someone. That's all I kind of be for her. Thanks for sharing that, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Man, going deep today. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, that's all. Everybody all right. good? Man, thank you guys, man. That's a, that's, man, that's my best energy. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Abdul. Thanks, Isaiah. Thanks, Isaiah. Thanks, Isaiah. Thanks, Isaiah.